going to call to order the public hearing for TEFRA for the Mount Macrina Manor Fayette County project. Mr. Lightcap. Madam Mayor, members of the council, as you know, my name is Bob Lightcap. I'm the solicitor for the Patrol Industrial Development Board. Uh, on May 14th, the authority um, decided to undertake the sponsorship of a project, industrial project for Mount Macrina Manor, which is a uh, Section 501c3 organization. They're located on West Main Street in Uniontown, really in Union Township. Uh, the project involves a $10.8 million rehab. It's actually a $15 million rehab, but $10.8 million to come uh, through the sponsorship of LIDA um, with financing through PNC on a tax free basis. Uh, with me is Mr. Bob. Klasnick, who's the Senior Vice President for PNC, and also Mary Lynn Myers, who is the uh, Director down at the Mount Macrina. Uh, you might ask why the Latrobe Industrial Development Authority is undertaking a project in Fayette County, which is the first question I asked, and the first question that each of the members of the authority asked. It, uh, first of all, every industrial development authority does have statewide jurisdiction. Uh, we can do a project anywhere in the state. Uh, thus far, we have chosen to try to keep our project in central Westmoreland County, as you know. Uh, however, we have done projects out, out of county on one other occasion, and Fayette County does not have a functioning uh, industrial development authority at this time. They haven't been functioning since the 90s. And for them to reorganize and get back in good good credentials with the state would uh, take quite a long time because they haven't filed a report since the 90s. And they would have to go back and file reports for the last 25 years. And then that would be because of the red tape that would have to go through, it would be almost impossible for them to get it done within a reasonable time. So that coupled with the fact that we do not have any of the projects on the, on the uh, yeah, near, near horizon, we haven't even had an inquiry this year. Um, plus the fact we're at mid-year, so if a project did come along, we probably have a very short window in eligibility. Uh, project came along in the fourth quarter, we'd be able to close the deal in January or February next year, and that would not inhibit our ability to participate. So the authority decided to go ahead with uh, the sponsorship of the project. Now, under the Internal Revenue Code rules, as Madam Mayor said, TEFRA regulations, um, a public hearing has to be held. And this is the hearing that's being held. And under the advertisement of the um, notice of the hearing, it's being held on our behalf, on your behalf, and on behalf of the Fayette County Commissioners. Um, under the Act, um, the municipality which formed the corporation, us, uh, has to approve the project. Uh, actually, the mayor has the authority to do so. However, she is always, uh, she's a, uh, the, this uh, community has adopted a procedure that um, the mayor would not act in approval of the project unless she had concurrence from council. Um, also, the Fayette County Commissioners have to approve the project, and they're scheduled to approve it on the 16th at the regular monthly meeting. Um, the state has already received the application and has informed us that uh, the project is acceptable subject to the TEFRA proceedings and the proof of uh, the TEFRA proceedings having been given to them. The actual project involves the rehab of the existing facility, which contains approximately 88,000 square feet and is set forth in the uh, notice it's going to be a complete rehab of the facility together with the addition of 12 new resident rooms, complete rewiring of the facility, relocation of the lobby area, and construction of a 4,400 foot addition to occupation rehab services. Um, Ms. My Mrs. Myers, uh, if you have any questions of either uh, what the project consists of, uh, she's here to answer any questions. And also, Mr. Klasnick is here in case that you have any questions concerning the finance. Thank you, Mr. Lightcap. Do any members of council have any questions at this time? I have a question. Uh, 
if you could let us know just what exactly Mount Macrina means to the community, what, what they provide, what they do. I can speak to that. We we are a skilled long-term care facility, duly um, duly certified beds. We accept regular insurance as well as Medicaid insurance. So people are not limited coming to us if they are poor. And that's one of the highlights that we're proud of that we take um, people from all aspects of life. And um, people can come for standard long-term care or they can come for rehabilitative services such as like a broken hip or a minute. would you mind going to the mic would you mind going to the microphone because i'm not sure everyone in the room could hear you thank you you didn't say that <laughs> i can hear you <laughs> i've never got a lawyer i could be here even if i'm not like this <laughs> so as i was saying can you hear me now? yes thank you so as i was saying mount mccrina manor is a skilled nursing facility we take care of um, the poor as well as the people that have the ability to pay on their own. And we provide all kinds of different care, including rehabilitative care where people come with injuries, a broken hip if they fall when they're working in their garden or if they need knee replacements, things like that, with the goal of rehabilitating them and getting them back to their home. And then other people get to the point in their life where they can't stay at home and they don't have their resources or the family to care for them. And then that's when they come to us to be cared for. Um, we do hospice care for people that have come to the end of their life and they have terminal illnesses. We also do memory care in which we take care of dementia units, um, dementia patients in dementia units that they um, just don't have the cognitive ability to care for themselves anymore, but they can still walk and get around very well. And we kind of keep track of them and make sure they're okay. So we provide a lot of diverse services to our community. And we, we've been, um, for many years, we've been the number one rated choice in our community of nursing homes in our area. And a, a lot of it, I believe, is because we are a nonprofit and we're a faith-based facility. So a lot of people in our community are very thankful when they get the opportunity to come to the manor and stay with us. Thank you. Any other questions? Does the public have any questions? Anyone from the public like to comment or ask any questions? Uh, James Miller, 127 East 4th Avenue, Latrobe. Uh, are any funds from the Latrobe industrial development being utilized and where do those funds come from? The answer is no. Um, and what's more, uh, they're, all the funding comes from the bank. It's all borrowed funds. And what's more, uh, neither the borough or city of Latrobe, the county of Fayette, uh, Como, Pennsylvania, or county of Westmoreland are responsible for paying back the loan. It's a non reinforcement Thank you. Any other questions? If there are no further questions, then I call the public meeting closed. Call to order the June 8th, 2015 Latrobe City Council meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I ask for a moment of silence to quietly relax ask for guidance, or give thanks. Thank you. Roll call, Ms. Buck.
this time we have approval of the minutes from the May 11th, 2015 meeting. We have a motion, please. I move that the minutes of the May 11th, 2015 meetings be approved and accepted and be permitted to remain on the secretary's desk where they will be available for reading and inspection to anyone. Thank you. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. At this time, I have a motion to approve the fiscal department reports and paid bills for the month of May 2015. I'll make that motion. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll second. Any questions or discussion? This is my question to you is, is anything, any bills we're paying outside the guidelines of the budget? Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries unanimously. Committee reports. Finance Committee, Madeline and Mike. Anything? I have nothing. I have nothing to report. Public Safety, Julie, Jerry. Neighborhood Watch Meeting, uh, July 6th, 6.30 here. I was at the one um, last week, yep. last week, last Monday. They had a wonderful speaker. It was really interesting. Um, they had, a, I, I thought, a pretty good turnout. Um, always can use more people. There's probably maybe 20 people here, huh, Jim? And really good speaker. So I encourage everyone to try to attend this. Personnel committee, Mike. Uh, we met today. <coughs> we received uh, the beginnings for the FOP contract and also uh, to review the upcoming police chief's contract expires in February of 2016. Is that right, Wayne? So we're looking at some, uh, trying to be proactive and look at the issues there. So we just started that today. Uh, Public Works Committee, Jerry and Madeline, anything? No, nothing. Okay, Board and Authority reports. That anything from the Lakeshore Municipal Authority? Anything? Uh, anything else here? We got our we got our um, meeting minutes from Park and Rec, and um, we have the citizen requests. Did I skip it? Yes. Yeah, I did. I'm so sorry. I, I'm sorry. I skipped that. Not on purpose. <laughs> I'm so excited that Jim Kelly's not here. I just can't even think straight. I'll make it. Um, this, I know, Jim. Thank you. Must have something to do with that first name. Um, the citizens' request report related to the uh, agenda items, please. Um, at this time, we'll have citizens' requests related to any item on the agenda, and then at the end of the meeting, we'll have an open citizens' request form. So if anyone has any items that they'd like to talk about which relate to the agenda, please go to the microphone, state your name and address. Thanks, Jim. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, want to explain, uh, not explain, but uh, a little explanation of what uh, change we uh, were contemplating on the parking, uh, unlicensed parking event, which is a great idea. I'm just wondering what the changes are and what they are needed for. Was there a specific reason for that or, uh, uh, you know, why we're doing it? Because there's, I think there's already something in our ordinances that they can't park on city streets unless they're licensed or uh, registered. Okay, Jim, the, uh, the problem with the ordinance now that it lists um, the violation under the Pennsylvania Code. But technically under the Pennsylvania Code for a, a, a um, registration violation, the vehicle has to be moving. So if somebody would ask a hearing, they would go to the magistrates, uh, the attorney would testify for the defendant that uh, this is this was charged under the code and he would have to rule in favor of the defendant because it wasn't moving. 
This removed the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation or the vehicle code out of the, the equation. Thank you very much. Any other comments, questions from the public with related to agenda items? Okay. Department reports. Joe? Once again, uh, we outdid ourselves with the e-waste collection. I don't have the totals in yet because uh, all of the material hasn't been processed, but I expect it will be in excess of 20 tons we collected in five hours. And once again, the CRO officer, uh, uh, she brought some young help, and once again, it was invaluable to us to have uh, some young ones there giving us a hand. Uh, the paving, as far as the CDBG, uh, our last contact with them, they had still not received their money yet, so there is no timetable on when we'll be doing that paving. Our paving, I've narrowed it down uh, to, I believe, eight streets or eight locations. I've uh, given a copy of that to the city manager and the mayor. I'd like to put it out for bid and see how the bids come in and see if it's within our our budget if not it will have to do some more scratching last month i was asked at last month's meeting uh, by council if we could do something with some of the handicap spots and i believe we repaired five or six to date throughout the month so we're working at it we're trying to do a little bit of everything we got some of the worst ones so Still do not have a price yet from uh, CoStars, being the state, talked to them the other day. It probably will not come in until next month, the cost per ton. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Chief Boomer? Um, I just want to thank uh, John Brazili and the fire department for the excellent job they did up on Main Street. Uh, with the unfortunate fire. Uh, they were very good. They contained it quickly, knocked it down quickly. I can, When I came on to work at 7, I could see the flames by the time I got my gear on and, and was up on Main Street to help with traffic control. It was done as far as the flames. So it, it, I was just very impressed by that. And I uh, just want to uh, thank them for working so well and preserving the evidence for the police department. Uh, we were able to make an arrest on that, and it worked out very well with the two departments. Uh, second of all, um, I'm glad I'm getting Nunzio back. Uh, it's been, been, since, <laughs> been since January, and uh, we really need him, and I'm glad that he's coming back. We would about a week. About a week. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Chief Brazili? Uh, just what Jimmy touched base on, uh, I'd like to thank them also because they, his, uh, his team was up there and uh, they helped us. They were pretty quick to make sure everybody was evacuated and uh, not to forget the EMS, Kelly Smith downstairs was helping us drag hose because uh, it, was, it was pretty hectic there in the first probably five minutes and uh, like I said, when I could see it from my house coming down my driveway, I knew we had a problem. But uh, Things went very well. Uh, we probably had a quicker knockdown, except for we lost a plug on the corner of Ridge and Main. It's just one of those things that happens occasionally. We broke and lost water. But uh, we were able to contain it. And uh, all the departments, uh, fire, police, EMS, they all worked very well together. It went smoothly. We had no injuries. And it was nice to have a have a suspect uh, apprehended in, the, uh, in this one. So <laughs> it made things a lot easier. Um, I wasn't here last month to touch on uh, the ISO and just to give you a little bit of insight, uh, I don't know if Mike, you gave a whole lot or was able to, but uh, there's a lot of things that go into that. Um, water supply is just one portion of it and that was probably about 30 or 40 percent. The other 60 percent came from the fire department and it broke into categories. Uh, we are countrywide and I say countrywide, and that's across the U.S., uh, we are an ISO rating of three, and there's probably about 2,900 
departments that have that. Uh, once you drop down into a one or a two, one being the best, you're into the hundreds. So don't know that that's ever going to be achievable for us, but uh, that number does uh, help businesses, residential and, and uh, industrial uh, with their, their insurance uh, premiums. Uh, what helped us a lot was our communications. We upgraded our system about three years ago, so we have backup repeaters and whatnot. That helped a lot, but it's all broken down into a point system, um, the size of our pumps on our trucks, our equipment and everything. But uh, it's pretty monumental for, for the city, um, and uh, that number probably hasn't changed for probably 60, 60 years at least. So there's a lot of people asking how we did it. I said, well, I'm not quite sure myself. <laughs> it happened, and it, it's, it's a good thing for, for the whole community. So uh, I put a lot of work into it. Tommy Gray did his thing on the... But it was, it was months of painstaking stuff, so maintenance records. And i got to thank Joe and his guys up there at the, the shop for keeping our trucks up. And uh, that's all part of it, maintenance records, everything. So, But uh, it's a good thing, and uh, I, I'm glad it happened for us. So that's all I have. Thanks, Chief. Pam's not here today. Any Anything on code enforcement, Joe, that you know about? Anything going on? Okay. Okay, Wayne, we are now to the agenda items. All right. Uh, we have a motion from the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, motion, I'm, I move we adopt a resolution to be read by the solicitor authorizing the mayor to approve Mount Messina Manor project. That's a motion I need from the council. I'll make I'll make a mo I'm sorry, may I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. May I have a second? I'll second it. Any questions? Discussion. Ms. Buck? This is resolution 2015-19. Mr. Baldinari? Yes. Mr. Scafora? Yes. Mrs. Caldwell Cravener? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Ms. Beasy? Yes. Mayor Wolper? Yes. Go to six yes. Thank you, Mr. Lightcap. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Under Police Department. Good luck. Under the Police Department, uh, the council needs to make a motion uh, to authorize the solicitor to prepare an amendment to the code of ordinances requiring expired regarding expired registration or unregistered vehicles. And that relates to the discussion that, Ms. that Chief Boomer explained to us just now, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, may I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Ms. Buck? That's just a motion. Oh, sorry. It's a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. If, if I may on that. Um, we had a pretty good explanation from Mr. Kelly at our agenda session. It's not a, we, we did ask the questions over that, and he did explain the reasons why we were going to do this. Um, we did have a lot of questions at the time at the agenda session. They were answered by Mr. Kelly at that time. And that's why I don't have any questions now because they were answered back at the agenda session. So, thank you. Okay, motion for, again for the police department. Uh, Motion to adopt a resolution to read by a solicitor amending certain provisions of the civil service rules and regulations concerning officer promotions. May I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. May I have a second? I'll second. Chief, could you explain a little bit about what this is? I mean, I know it was talked about, and I'm well aware of it, but for the, for the general public, what this is about. Basically, it's uh, replacing a written score with an objective uh, oral score by an objective panel that would come in and interview the candidates after they take the written test. Any questions? Just a motion. Okay, which is? <laughs> it's fine. Ms. Buck, this is resolution 2015-20. Ms. Beasy? Yes. Mr. Scapora? Yes. Mrs. Caldwell-Fraser? Yes. 
Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Ball and Mary? Yes. Mayor Wolford? Yes. That is six, yes. Last item on the agenda? You're doing really well. We do need to get it. <laughs> I motion on the, again. Can you strike that from the tape? <laughs> oh no, Jack has his on. This motion is on the public works. Uh, motion to adopt a resolution to be read by the solicitor authorizing the purchase of de-icing salt for future use from Coast Guard. May I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. I'll second. I have a motion. You made a motion. You made a second. Yeah. Any questions or discussion? Ms. Buck. This is resolution 2015-21. Ms. Beasy. Yes. Mr. Bold Mary. Yes. Mr. Scapora. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mrs. Colwell Craver. Mayor Wolford. Yes. That ends the items on the agenda. Phew, we made it. Unfinished business. I apologize for the heat. We're having, obviously, we have to call tomorrow. We're having some issues. Apparently, we can't get to get it to cool off in here. So, any unfinished business items? Anyone have? I would like to ask just for an update on the RCAP grant process. Uh, you know, currently, we're in the process of, we're probably, I would think, 80% uh, along the process. Uh, Diana from Pitcher Homes is continuing to work on it and hope to have it wrapped up shortly. Thank you. Any other items under unfinished business? Any new business on anybody's mind on council? I just have a quick comment for Chief Brazilian. I'm going to pass this along. I think the first board fair was a big success. My kids were there every day. So I, I hope it was a big success. There's lots of people down there. It, actually, it was uh, it was a huge success. We only had one bad day of weather on this Friday. But uh, from what they're saying, we uh, probably broke a record this year with, with uh, this year's uh, harvest. So. Very, very productive, and it seemed there was hardly any problems. I don't, in fact, I don't know of any. Yeah. Of course, I was stuck in a bingo stand, so those ladies are only going to beat me with their umbrellas. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, we appreciate how fast that along to the committee. Yeah, as far as incidents or anything, I think this is the first year that I don't know. Uh, and, and honestly, I, to, to touch base on what Chief Boomer said, it's the first year I've, I've seen absolutely nothing. So usually we have a couple. Scraps, but, and, and That's right. Hey, yeah, I grew up on Oak Street, so I grew up with that fair. So I'm glad to see that you guys are still doing it. Well, you know what, uh, Madam Mayor, we we were just discussing it. I think we're probably close to 100 years of doing that. And more wow. you know, every station in town used to do that. Mm -hmm. so I remember. We're sort of the sole survivor. <laughs> so it, it's more like a, I, I guess a, a, a tradition now that they keep going and. Of course, reach keeps me in line. He <laughs> just keeps me going. So. At this time, now we'll have our open forum. So, um, if there's any items on anyone's mind that they'd like to discuss that weren't on the agenda that are just on their mind, please go to the microphone and bring them up for discussion. I wasn't going to bring this up, but uh, I was wondering uh, the the. Uh, arson on Main Street. Uh, I was just wondering if the two prior arsons that we had in Pennsylvania in Electro, if there's anything new on those and are we uh, keeping up on what the process, well you know what the process is in that there. So maybe the the uh, police chief, Mr. Bumar and uh, Mr. Brazelli could comment on that if they would please. Chief Bumar, do you have anything to say to that? Only that it's still an open investigation, and it would be negligent for me to comment on any facts or, or uh, suspects or anything like that right now. Isn't it true that at least one of those is is not under our jurisdiction that is being held at the at the county level or not? That's correct. At least one of the, the other two. I know that this is an investigation through the county, so we wouldn't necessarily know what's going on, correct? Chief Brazilian, do you have anything to add? Just 
same thing as Chief Boomer. It's still under an ongoing investigation, and the uh, a lot of it is at the county level. So it's it's pretty much uh, it went to the state level, and it's at the county level right now. So uh, as they obtain information, they pass it along to myself or Chief Boomer. Um, and the only thing I can tell you is that it you know until they have somebody, we probably won't hear anything. Um, but they are on an open. Uh, an open basis where they, they will continue. I can tell you I still get calls from insurance companies uh, trying to get information. Uh, I just had probably a month ago I had an insurance company, I think they were out of Ohio, I didn't, about the athletic club. Uh, uh, they suffered some smoke damage and stuff and they're still, still trying to get some insurance money and I told them, I said, listen, I don't have anything more and I pass it on to the county level. You know. But th that's pretty much the only thing I can tell you up to now. Thank you. Anything else from the residents? Anyone else have something they would like to share? Questions? <coughs> Jim Bolton, 225 Irving Avenue. You're going so swiftly to have a lot of questions, but I just simply want to answer a simple one. Why isn't the street from Illinois Quicklin to Jefferson Street along the railroad tracks open? That's a little bit of a yes. shortcut. Yes. What's the holdup? Why can't we remove those horses? We were waiting for the uh, school to finish their work. For what? The, we were waiting for the school to finish. They're not, their work is not quite complete. Once they're done, here's the council, we'll talk to council about opening back up. Chief? Seems to be loading, uh, unloading uh, mulch in large trucks. They're backing up around the corner back there. And I've seen the truck sitting there for hours at a time while they unload the mulch into the flower bed. Well, I'm just wondering, you know, when it's going to open up. I, I, I have no idea, but I would assume that as soon as they're finished with the. About the same time that school might open. <laughs> uh, I think a little bit before that. Yeah, <laughs> right now. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. City manager's report. Just a couple quick things. Um, we got, we. Um, received some insurance uh, amounts and are, they haven't gone up, well, but in significance is a, an opinion you may have. Uh, public official insurance went up about $2,000 due to some uh, liability that we've had, some occurrences, and the healthcare insurance, because of the healthcare, healthcare industry has gone up 20%, which, you know, will we'll be fine budget-wise, but it's just a, bigger hit than we would like. We, we're going to probably start the process in a few months of uh, looking to see what our alternatives are. Yeah, if people aren't aware of it, our um, health care policy runs from July 1st to June 30th. So we'll be seeing those increases July 1st. Right. And the way the program is set up, we're grandfathered in on the, where we are now. If we start looking around, we are not going to grandfather, which we'll have to see what it's worthwhile financially. And um, the last thing I just want to make, make a, a, a note of, there was a lawsuit re relating to the bridge, and we've been exonerated from any issue of the Murphy's Bridge. Uh, we've, been, we've received notification that we are no longer part of that uh, lawsuit. Okay, that's good news. That's the lawsuit before. Uh, there was an auto accident on the bridge, and there was de de they couldn't determine whether or not, there was a question of whether it happened in Unity or in... Uh, the city of Latrobe, as it turned out, it was on Unity's side. I thought maybe somebody was suing because it's taking them so damn long. <laughs> Joe, when is that bridge going to open? We are working feverishly right now. <laughs> and Have uh, they brainwashed you or what? <laughs> no, uh, I understand the beginning of July sometime. Do they have the sides up yet? The sides are up and they're working on the approaches on both sides. Last time I walked over. Under the mayor's report, I just, you know, obviously want to echo um, what Chief Bumar had said to Chief Brazili and, and your team. Um, you know, those houses are close together and that thing could have gotten really ugly and you guys, you know, we're so fortunate in this community to have such a dedicated group of professionals that have the skill that John and his, his team has. So. Um, from, on behalf of myself and the council, and I think all the residents, thank you for 
your quick response um, and your life saving efforts and your property saving efforts and the teamwork between, as you stated, yourself, EMS, and the chief. We've got a great team here and um, it makes me proud to be mayor. So thank you all very much. Um, thank you. Just one reminder, this is the last meeting before our um, 4th of July celebration, so very soon you're going to start seeing lots and lots of activity around the community, um, starting with the, the pageant. Big Wheel Race. Big Wheel Race. Well, the, the, the program or the schedule of events has been in the paper and you can pick them up at most, most stores around town, so just be aware. Um, this is a big event for Latrobe. Um, gets a lot of attention, brings back a lot of families. Um, we want to look our best and behave our best. Yes, Mr. Miller. Uh, neighborhood Watch was uh, thinking about maybe putting a table or something or flyers. Who do we have to contact to get approval or something like that? Would it be Carol Greenwald? Carol Greenwald. Okay, we, we need her approval then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. If, if it's in the property, what if it's, out, what if it's outside and handing flyers out? All right. I talked to Carol. Thank you. And I'm sure that shouldn't be a problem. Thank you very much. I believe so. Um, yeah, I, I, I know at our last Park and Rec meeting that was still an issue, but she had some ideas, so that was just last two Thursdays ago, so I haven't talked to Jean since. But, but they're working on it and they know it's a problem. Anybody have anything else for the good of the order? If not, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Oh boy, don't all jump at once. May I have a second? Second. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs>